Hi friends, welcome to A Lovely Yarn Podcast. My name is Amber and this podcast is all about the fiber arts, mostly knitting, also some crochet, and every now and then I will talk a little bit about my spinning. But the spinning hasn't been happening recently, so I have not talked about spinning for a long time. But anyway, today is June 21st. It's Wednesday. It's the middle of the week. Um, and I have been wanting to film another episode because I feel like it's been a while. I don't know exactly when I filmed my last episode. I didn't check, but I'm actually in the middle of um, treatment for Lyme disease. And so I have just not been feeling well. I haven't had any extra energy and I'm actually, I'm starting to feel much better over the weekend though. It was horrific. I felt so sick. And, um, for those, I don't know, maybe not everyone's familiar with Lyme disease. Uh, so I live in the Northeast. I live in Pennsylvania and it's, um, Lyme disease is extremely bad here. It is a tick-borne illness and I, it's not something that has always been around and there is some, there are some theories and some controversy on the origin of Lyme disease and I'm not going to get into that here, but, um, I don't remember it being a thing at least not like it is now when I was younger and I'm in my forties. So, but now it is a very common, unfortunately a very common illness for people in my area to experience. And I had pulled a tick off of me a little over th probably like three and a half weeks ago. And I had saved it because we do have a lab here in Pennsylvania where you can send your, your tick and it's a free service. You just pay for the stamp to send it and um, they will check it for the bacteria that causes Lyme as well as I think 10 to 12 other bacteria that cause different tick-borne illnesses. So it's a really nice service that we have here. It's an independent lab but I think that they maybe partially do it to keep some stats on the prevalence of it and um, I saved my tick. It was fully engorged which means its belly was full uh, it was a very small tick, which the really small deer ticks are the ones that are more likely to carry Lyme, but I saved it and I thought if I develop symptoms, I will send it in. Well, probably two weeks after I pulled it out, I started to feel really achy and kind of, I felt feverish, but I didn't have a fever. I didn't just so tired. So I ended up sending it in and it came back positive for carrying Lyme. So then by that point, I, cause it takes like I think 72 hours after they received the tick. And by that point, I was feeling pretty sick. So I called and made an appointment with my doctor and he put me on doxycycline, which is the pretty typical uh, treatment for Lyme. And then did a blood test, which interestingly enough came back negative. So if, which I'm not surprised, um, this happens a lot. My brother-in-law actually had a very bad case of Lyme a couple of months ago and both of his tests came back negative, but um, it was very evident that it was Lyme. So you cannot test or you cannot really trust the test, the typical test that the doctors run. Uh, there's one that's called the Western blot, which is much more accurate, but insurances don't always pay for it and traditional doctors don't typically order it. So. Um, but I am continuing the rest of my doxycycline. I'm about halfway through and yesterday was the first day I didn't have to take a nap and it was the first day I didn't have a bad headache. So I'm improving. I'm feeling almost back to normal. But anyway, uh, I did talk to my doctor's office this morning and they said, yeah, it could just be that it was an inaccurate negative. So, or a false negative. So if you finish your 10 day course and you start to feel the symptoms come back, call. So that I was glad to hear that they would at least be willing to um, address that. I don't like to take antibiotics, but I also will not mess around with Lyme. It can cause really bad long-term problems. I know that not every area of the United States deals with it. So it's really bad in like Pennsylvania through Maine. And then I think there's like parts of the Midwest that experience it. I don't know, do do any of you viewers from other countries, do you guys even deal with Lyme disease? Do you have ticks? Um, ticks are so bad here. It used to be that you would only get them if you went out into the woods. But yesterday morning, my husband and I were sitting on our front porch having our coffee and he had a tick crawling up his hand and it was the tiny little deer tick that carries Lyme. And it's just so bad 
and I don't really know any solutions for it. You know, there really aren't. Um, we put flea and tick collars on our dogs and cats because if not, they would carry them into the house. And um, short of getting our entire yard sprayed, which I don't want to do because of the, um, like, I have plants that I grow out there that we eat. <laughs> so it's just one of those things in this area that we have to deal with. And, um, yeah, but anyway, I just did not have the energy for anything extra. I literally was taking two plus hour naps when I was feeling really sick. So I'm glad to be feeling more like myself now. I am not a good sick person. I hate being sick. I hate not feeling well. I hate not being able to be active and get stuff done. So I'm, I'm really happy to be <laughs> feeling better. So having said all that, I literally just rambled on for like six minutes about Lyme disease. I'm so sorry, <laughs> but I just wanted to fill you guys in about what I've been, you know, kind of experiencing with that. And, um, yeah, I mean, my daughter's had it. I think my, I think we've all had it here in our house now. So, and I've been on antibiotics for before as well. It's just a really prevalent thing. I have a lot to talk about today as far as knitting. I also have, um, so I have some, a couple of finished objects and I have some whips and I have some future knitting ideas as always. I also have cold brew. I did not have any caffeine this morning and I could feel it and it wasn't like it wasn't from the lime. It wasn't the lime tiredness. Like if that felt totally different, this was, I just need a little bit of caffeine to get me through the afternoon and what I need to get done. Um, it's just some cold brew. Honestly, I have not been reacting very good to, to caffeine. So I'm funny like that. Um, sometimes I can drink caffeine and it doesn't affect me. Other times I drink it and it makes me extremely anxious. It makes me feel very on edge and it gives me super bad heart palpitations. And I really can't predict when that's going to happen. I typically will have a run of where I can drink caffeine and I don't even drink a lot. I, I'd make myself a double shot of espresso in the morning. I do half calf and half decaf. Um, and yesterday I even did, I just literally put enough caffeine on the, or caffeinated grounds on the bottom of the portafilter just to cover the portafilter bottom. And then I filled the rest up with decaf, but it's still, I just was, it just, yeah, it's not so, but I'm trying this, I'm sipping it slowly. So I'm hoping that it doesn't make me feel anxious or give me heart palpitations. Okay, so I'm back and my first finished object is what I'm wearing and this is an Anchors Tee by um, Petite Knits and this is knitted in Drops Bell and the color is Mint Cream. Okay, so that was something I wanted to talk about because I kept calling this color Almond Rose in my last podcast episode. I was getting this confused with the Anchor that I made prior to this one, which I did make in the Drops Bell Almond Rose, and it was like a pink shade, because I think even in my last podcast episode, I was saying, I don't know why this is called Almond Rose. Like, I feel like Almond Rose should be a pink color, and then at least one of you viewers kindly um, corrected me and said, I think you're referring to your last anchors. <laughs> And so, yes, this is Mint Cream, which that name also does not make sense to me because there is no, like, I think of mint, I think of a green color. There's no green in this at all. So I'm not really sure where the mint part comes from, but um, here, I'm going to slide over and I'm going to just put a little insert here of like, so you can get the full length effect of it. I made this version a little bit more cropped than my last one that I made. And um, this was nice to knit because, because I had already knit one of these shirts in the same yarn. I already knew my gauge for it. So I was able to just cast on and go. And um, the one thing I did differently was, I think for my last one, I started with a size three and then I, as I was knitting, I was like, oh, this looks like it's gonna be too big. So I adjusted the count, stitch count in in the yoke somewhere to make it the rest of the body fit like the size two 
where this time I just cast it on for a size two and I I like this this is a perfect fit for me I still have I have some positive ease but I don't have like it's not boxy or anything I think it just fits really nicely and I when I made my last one I liked the length of that but I knew for my next one I wanted to crop it a little bit more so I probably made this one about an inch shorter maybe only half an inch shorter than the pink colored one um, and I, the reason I did that is because like in my picture that I in the video I just showed I do want have on high-waisted pants but when I tried on the first anchor sweater with a dress, I didn't, I thought, oh, this is fine, but I would like it to be a little bit more cropped when I'm wearing it with a dress. So I made this one a little bit more cropped because I plan on wearing this one over dresses. I could wear it with this, this outfit. This outfit is perfectly fine. And I have a couple of other high-waisted pants that I could wear this with, but I don't um, I don't know how much I actually will because when I raise my arms, like, you know, I don't, I'm just not comfortable with showing skin. <laughs> so, although I have a good, I have a good inch and a half or at least an inch of coverage, like overlap from the shirt over my, the top of these pants. So it may be okay. We'll see. We'll see what happens. But I'm um, really pleased with this. I love this sweater. I love this pattern. This pattern for me, for some reason, just flies. It just flies by. I don't get bored with it. I mean, it is a DK weight yarn, so that's probably part of it. But even this ribbing, like I typically don't, I'm not a big fan of ribbing, but even this ribbing is, I, it's enjoy, it's, en, it's enjoyable. So I, I don't know. I really wouldn't mind just having maybe a couple more of this particular pattern, this sweater. And I might end up doing that. Um, but I feel like I'm, I feel pretty good about where I am as far as how many knitted summer shirts I have. And I'm, I'm working on one now that I'm going to show you here in a few minutes. So I can almost feel myself shifting from wanting to knit summer shirts to kind of forward thinking to fall. Not that I want fall to come because I don't, I'm like totally a summer person, but, um, you know, I only have like three, maybe four months where I would wear summer shirts. So I get way more use out of my sweaters, like my warmer sweaters. We'll see. We'll see. Okay. So that's enough about this because there's really nothing else left to say about it other than it's a really nice pattern and I, I like it a lot. So I'm putting my next finished object onto a pair of sock blockers because I have a pair of socks here that I want to show you guys that I had at least started on my last episode. Um, and I don't remember how far I had gotten. And I knit these just using some scrap sock yarn that I had in my stash. I finished them. I actually closed up the toe today. So they are freshly finished, not blocked because I don't block my socks. I mean, if it's a lacy pattern, and I was, especially if I was giving them as a gift, I would block them, but I'm, I'm not typically one to block my socks. So here we go. This is just a, a pair of shorty socks. I'm not going to talk a lot about this because I talked about how I made them in my last episode. So if you would like the details on that, you can go back to my last video. And I think I may have even written in the description like all of the, like how many rounds I did for ribbing, how many rounds I did of the leg, and so on and so forth. Um, but yeah, I like this, this yarn, this self-striping yarn a lot, and I don't know what it is because I don't have the tag. I've had this yarn for many years. I actually knit a pair of full-length socks for my daughter um, using this maybe four years ago. And this was just what was left over and I actually used all and now this feels good this feels good this is all I have left of this yarn so that's perfect that's a perfect amount to have to put in a scrappy blanket and um, and then for my con contrast I use Knit Picks 
Droll Tweed, and this is in the Espresso Heather. That's what I used for the cuffs, the heel, and the toes. So, very pretty. Love that. I love that. Oh, and speaking of shorty socks, so someone had asked me about these that I showed last podcast episode as a finished object, and they, you asked me what the yarn was that I used, and I am so sorry, I do not know. I don't know how I lost the ball band already because this was a full new skein of yarn when I made these. <laughs> And so usually what I do is I take whatever's left over and I wrap the ball band around it and then I stick it in a bag where I keep all of my commercial sock yarn scraps. But I completely misplaced the label and I don't know if I maybe threw it away. So I don't know what this yarn is. So I'm really sorry about that. And I didn't get to answer that question in the comment section so I thought I would just answer it now in case the viewer that asked that is watching. So yeah. That is my second finished object. Now, my third finished object I no longer have with me, but I did take some video clip that I'm going to insert in here, and I'm going to do a voiceover and talk about that because I think that would be easier than me talking about it and then putting in a clip to the side later because this project was really special and it was super adorable so I definitely want to talk about it so I'm gonna go ahead and um, insert that footage now and just do a little voiceover and tell you about that particular project I knit the good bunny and this is a pattern by Susan B Anderson I knit this as a gift for my friend's daughter who just turned a year old it's knit from various DK weight yarn the shawl is knit out of a nature spun the dress is knit out of a Quince and Co. The little pantaloons in the shawl, that brown is a Cloudborn. Um, cloud, I forget the exact name of that. And then the bunny itself is knit out of a uh, Cloudborn heathered yarn. And I think it's the medium brown, but Cloudborn is a discontinued yarn, I'm pretty sure. I mean, you might be able to find it somewhere, but it might be challenging. But this was just such a fun knit. It is knit... Um, like in one piece so you're not seaming things together uh, you just for the most the most you do is pick up stitches and then knit the arms pick up stitches knit the ears so um, it is really fun super cute I love the pico edging on the shawl and the little bonnet I don't know I just really thoroughly enjoyed this and I will definitely be making more of these as well as checking out um, some of her other patterns. And I, I found a collection of Peter Rabbit books, so I grabbed that as well, and this was her gift for her first birthday. Okay, so that bunny was just so cute. And the pattern was super easy, um, so I will definitely be making... I love, I love um, Susan B. Anderson's little stuffies, that she, her knitted stuffies that she has. Uh, I actually love most of her stuff. Have you ever seen the little scrappy, I forget what she calls it. Okay, if I remember, I'll insert a picture here of it, but it's basically this scrappy baby blanket that is so charming and rustic, and every time I see that, because she'll sometimes, I, she'll sometimes, um, I get her newsletters, and every now and then I'll get one saying that there's kits for that. I've been so tempted to buy a kit for that because I love that little blanket and the only thing that keeps me from doing that is this, because it is so little but in reality once you know I become a grandmother <laughs> which I know but I'm telling you folks it's probably not that far off because time just flies by so quickly and my kids are all getting older um, I just, I might, I just might have to make that. I might have to, because I love her yarn too. If you have ever used Barrett Wool Co. yarn, it's just so, it's lovely. It's absolutely lovely yarn. I've used it for a couple of projects. It just feels special when you're knitting with it. You know how some yarns, you just, it just, the yarn just makes the process so much more enjoyable. That's how I feel when I knit with Barrett Wool Co. yarn. 
So um, I would love to buy a kit for that blanket someday if she's still making those kits because that blanket is just so incredibly charming and beautiful. But why did I, oh, that's right. I was like, why was I talking about that? And then I remembered that's because I just showed you the good bunny pattern from her. And I have, I think I have another one of her animal, stuffed animal patterns. Um, but I can't remember which one it is. I'd have to look in my Ravelry, my Ravelry uh, purchase, little purchase file. Okay, so let's start talking about my works in progress. And I have several of them. I, no, actually I only have two because one is ready to start, but I haven't started it yet. Okay, but the first thing I want to talk about is the Pine Creek Crop. And this is a pattern by Samantha Guerin. Um, my printer is really, I, I just use generic ink, so it never prints nice. And so you're not, I don't even know why I'm showing you that because, here, you know what, let me just put that picture up here. Because this you cannot see, <laughs> can't see the details in it. Um, okay, so originally I wanted to knit the Salty Air Tea, this pattern that she wrote. And I've been hearing about it from some other people, um, particularly Diana from The Fruitful Hands. She had knitted it, which I love that podcast, by the way. If you guys, I know I've recommended it before, but I'm just reiterating my love for that podcast. I always get super excited when Diana and Katie release a new episode, which they just did earlier in the week. Anyway, um, I'll link them down below if I remember. But anyway, I was originally going to do the salty air tank or tea, but then I got on the designer's Ravelry page and I was looking at her other summer teas and I liked the Pine Creek crop better because the lace design actually started right after the collar where with the salty air tank, there was like a pretty significant, in my mind, that's relative, right? But a pretty significant section of just plain stockinette and then there was a band of lace and I just really liked the look of the ribbing going right into the lace section of the oak so I decided on this Pine Creek top crop and everything else looked very similar as far as like the fit of it and um, you know the I mean I feel like they're both pretty cropped Although that's always something you can adjust. But let me show you what I have so far. I'm knitting this in the Pearl, so Pearl Soho Linen Quill Honey Pink that one of you beautiful viewers sent me. And um, this is what I've got. <laughs> I, so I'm feeling some feels about this because I, so I, I gauge swatched. Okay. And I know this is one of those things. Like some people gauge swatch, some people don't, some people do sometimes and then other times don't. And I'm kind of like one of the middle people where sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. However, I have not knit a significant amount of sweaters in fingering weight yarn, not enough to make me feel comfortable about not gauge swatching. So I did gauge swatch, but what I did is I, and this is what I normally do when I gauge swatch. I normally do not do a full four by four square. I usually do about two inches and then I'll do like five, five inches uh, wide by like two inches tall. So I know that I'm not even swatching correctly, but in my mind, I figure it's better than nothing. And I'm usually more concerned about the um, stitches, the number of stitches across than I am about the, like the row count which I know that can really significantly impact a pattern, certain patterns, but um, I'm, all, I'm usually more, in my mind, I feel like the stitch count is more important than the row count. So I usually knit in the round when I do a swatch, so I don't have to go back and forth because that's not even, I don't knit back and forth when I knit sweaters in the round, so I just do the, the um, swatch in the round. I don't block them. <laughs> I just kind of tug them out and then I measure 
And again, I know that that's not like the accurate way to do a gauge swatch, but again, I figure it's better than nothing. And then I always rip them out because I, what am I going to do with a bunch of swatches? And I don't have any place to like, dis I know some people display them. I don't have any place to do that. And um, like, I guess you could use certain swatches for coasters for like your drinks or whatever, which would be something that would be a possibility to do. But I normally don't make mine long or tall enough to do that. Um, so I just rip mine out because then there's always that worry that I'm not going to have enough yarn either. So that's what I do. I don't know. I feel like other people probably do that as well. You know, you just do your little gauge swatch, then you rip it out and start your knitting. So I think if I remember correctly that this pattern called for size six needles, size US six. No, it called for five. And I actually got gauge then with the, the one that it... Yes, I got gauge with the size five needles. Perfectly, I wrote in my notes, got gauge perfectly. <laughs> so anyway, so I am, this is a top down and you do the yoke and then at some point you go back and pick up these stitches at the top and you do your collar. And I'm just a little worried about how wide this is. This, look how wide. Maybe it's not that wide. It just seems really wide. And part of this could be because I'm not used to doing sweaters like this. I mean, I have knit sweaters where I go back and pick up the collar stitches and do the ribbing, but most of the top down sweaters I do um, start with the ribbing and then work down. So I just, I'm hoping this isn't gonna be too wide. And I know that I can make the call, I can adjust that, but then I don't want it to like bunch up either. I always get a little bit, I always question myself a little bit when I'm knitting a pattern for the first time. I like when I find a pattern like the anchors or like um, the ranunculus or the Felix pullover. I love when I find a pattern that I like that fits me well and that I um, pretty much know how it's gonna turn out because you know, you're investing your time. And I know some people have no problem with ripping out projects and I will rip out projects if I'm, if I don't think I'm going to wear them because what's the sense of keeping them, but I don't really like to do it. <laughs> so this is, let me see if I can show you. It's, it's really not a very good representation of the lace because it's very bunched up on the cable, but this is what I have so far. And this is my first time using the linen quill, and I, I do really like it. It has a very nice halo, you can see, and I'm assuming that's from probably the alpaca, maybe some of the linen in it. And so this color is not, I mean, I'm not sure about how this color goes with my skin tone. I feel like when I'm tan, it will be okay but when I'm not tan it might be very similar to my natural skin tone so I figured you know and this is a summer shirt so I would most likely be wearing it in the summer when I typically have a tan now I was very tan because I spend a lot of time outside but I was sick and now I'm on the doxycycline which you're not supposed to be out in the sun because it can give you like a, a weird like red all over body rash and I don't really care to experience that on top of everything else. So I've been staying out of the sun, so I'm losing my suntan. Um, so I'm not sure about this color with my complexion. And so I started to feel a little bit sad about that. I was feeling a little bit sad anyway because I wasn't feeling well. And then I thought, you know what I'll do is I will over dye this with something if the color, if I don't like the color when I'm all done. And I haven't given a lot of thought into that yet. I do have, we eat a ton of avocados here. So I do have um, a bunch of the avocado skins and pits frozen in the freezer. To, I saved them to do some natural dyeing that I never got around to. I also have a ton of dried hibiscus, which um, my hibiscus flowers are a really pretty magenta color. 
and so my plant has since died sadly but uh, the last year I had that plant I went out and I picked the flowers as they were kind of withering and then I dried them all and I saved them so I could make that into a dye bath as well and I feel like that might be what I do because um, it's a really beautiful color. Again, I don't know what it will look like over dyeing this, but that's kind of a fun experiment, kind of exciting. So that is my plan. If I don't like this color when it's when this garment is all finished, if it if I don't feel like it's a good color for my skin tone, then I'm just going to go ahead and over dye it. I am realizing how long it takes to get through a fingering weight project. Um as I said before, I haven't really knit a lot of fingering weight sweaters and I prefer to knit like DK, even worsted weight sweaters. Those are a little bit warmer to wear. So I think practically I would probably wear more lighter yarn weight sweaters because even in the winter, I mean, we have heating in our home and so I don't typically have to get like completely bundled up. You know what I mean? Um, but I just feel like it's taken a really long time to get through this and I still have half half of a section on the first chart and then and then for my size I do half of the next lace section on the next chart so I still have quite a bit of the lace to do and I'm thinking that's probably why it feels like it's taking so long because I'm having to really pay attention to the chart once I get going on a round, I can typically remember what I'm doing like the whole way around so I don't have to keep looking at the chart. Um, but every row pretty much changes. Once I get to just the stockinette, because after I get through the yoke, the stock or the body is just stockinette until you get to the ribbing. So that, I don't know, that may go faster because it is a size five needle. So that's possible. We're gonna just wait and see. But I am enjoying it. It's nice because um, I'll just sit down and I'll do like three to five rows or rounds. And um, I feel like I've accomplished something when I do that because it is, it is a knit that I have to pay more attention to. So this isn't something that I'm going to work on when I'm having a conversation with somebody or, you know, I need to focus on something. <laughs> um, I have another project actually that I'm about to show you that I'm using for that. Okay, so that's my Pine Creek crop by Samantha Gurin. Okay, and my next project is in, okay, so this yarn has been two different things. First, it started as a pair of socks. I'm gonna pop that picture right in there. We went camping last weekend and I grabbed a skein of yarn, wound it up, and I thought, I'm gonna make this into a pair of socks. So on um, on the drive, on the car ride to the campground, I cast it on these socks. I was, what was I gonna do? Hermione's Everyday Socks. That's right, Hermione's Everyday Socks. I've made that pattern a ton. I love that pattern. It's really pretty and yet it's very easy to memorize. I have my window open so somebody just drove by on a motorbike. <laughs> um, it's really easy to memorize and it's just a really beautiful like scrunchy sock when you're all finished. So that's a pattern I highly recommend. Highly recommend that one. But anyway, so as I showed that picture, I, I knitted that up and then I took that picture while I was sitting one day at our campsite and I was just working on them and I was looking at it. I kept thinking, I kept thinking the whole time I was knitting on those socks. I was like, this yarn's too pretty for my feet. Like, you know, I just, I want, I don't think I want to wear it where it's going to be hidden. I think I want to wear it where people are going to see it, where I'm going to see it. And so I ended up ripping that sock out and I cast something else on. And this yarn is by Flower Hill Fleeces. Look at all of those colors. So pretty. It's like a pastel-y, beautiful, cheery rainbow of yarn. <laughs> um, I came home from camping. I 
kind of like didn't I just stopped working on it because I, I had another project there I had my other socks that I showed you I just thought I'm just gonna work on these socks while I'm here and um, I'm gonna and I, I did some research when we got home I wanted to find either a like smaller shawl or a pair of fingerless mitts and I decided to go with the shawl and I found this pattern called the pebble shawlette there's the picture of the pattern I found that one and I found it found a few other ones and I narrowed it down to this to the pebble shawlette and then another one that I can't remember the name of I printed both of them off both of them were free patterns so I printed both of them off and I decided that I wanted to do the pebble shawlette because um, it looked first of all it looked simple which I wanted, I, I because I'm doing this more complicated charted lace work crop top, I wanted to have something that was a little bit more mindless to work on. And so the Pebble Chalette seemed to fit that bill. So let me show you what I have so far. And again, this is a, did I say this is a one of a kind? This was just a one of a kind. I think she was just messing around. And so it doesn't have a name and I don't even, I. I don't think she even carries anything like this on her website. So I'm sorry about that because it is, oh, I'm in the middle of a round. I am in the middle. Okay. I'm going to talk and I'm going to, I'm going to knit <laughs> to the end so that I can spread this out on my needles and show you guys because it's too hard whenever, you know, you know how that is. I didn't, I don't know why I usually don't stop in the middle of, of rows or rounds. I usually try to get to the end. But I'm knitting this pattern on size six needles, which I think is what the pat what the pattern calls for. So it's fingering weight yarn on size six needles. So it's going to be a nice and airy shawl. Okay. So here we go. I just love those colors. They just make me really happy. They're, they're beautiful, but not like overly bright. They're more, they're more muted and they're my favorite colors, like the pinks, the coral, the blue, the greenish blue, just like really pretty. And I, so I think it's going to go with a lot of my, a lot of my clothing items as well. But basically you do these two stockinette pan, panels on either side. And then this is a knot that is very easy to make. You do like a purl three and then you do a knit three and then a purl three all in the same stitches. And I'm telling you that because this is a free pattern, so I'm not giving anything away. So you have this tray, it's, you ha it's a shawlette and it's crescent shaped, but in the middle you have that knot, that pattern, that textured section that kind of goes out like a triangle. Okay. And then you have the stockinette on the sides. So, really pretty, really easy to do. This is my mindless knit. And I'm really happy that I decided to do this. I want to show you my beautiful little ceramic. This is a ceramic progress keeper. I just have it marking the right side of my project. But that is from Holland Hoof Farm, who I have ordered progress keepers and buttons off of, and you must check them out. They just either did or they're getting ready to do a button, clay button, like ceramic button um, update. Oh my goodness, their buttons are so whimsical and charming. They have, you, I, I've shown a couple, I got a couple off of them and I've shown them in a previous podcast. I haven't used them yet, but right now they're getting ready to put like these little houses. They have quilt blocks, little buttons that are, look like quilt blocks. Um, They've had like bird. I got, I got bird. I got bird ones. Um, chickens, like, oh my goodness, so many beautiful and whimsical and cute things. So check them out. Um, but yeah, that's my pebble shawlette. And because it's called a shawlette, I'm assuming it's not going to be, a, it didn't look like it would be really humongously big. Um, we'll see though. We'll see, I still have a lot of yarn left. So I have a lot of fingering weight projects 
on my needles right now, which is making me crave something that's done with a heavier weight, which might be why I'm, look, I'm starting to look ahead to the fall and thinking about what I might want to knit then, because the fingering weight projects do just take longer, right? Because they're made with a thinner yarn. Okay, so my last, my last, um, I guess I should call this a future knit, but it's literally, I'm going to cast it on today. And I have the yarn here and I have the pattern, but it is, I'm doing the Heel Toe do -si do Socks by Kay Litton, otherwise known as the Crazy Sock Lady. And I chose that pattern. Well, I've had that pattern in my Ravelry like I've had it saved in my favorites on, on Ravelry for a while. Sorry, I'm trying to get the ball band on here. But I have this yarn that is a self-striping. That is what it's going to look like. So it's not like a real clearly, um, like it's a more gradual self-striping yarn. It's not clearly divided into different colors and sections. But, and this is the brand Super Garnet Tea, and I've used this for socks before. It's a really durable workhorse yarn. I tend to like that. Um, I really like more rustic commercial sock yarn for, for socks because they wear better. I really like knitting with indie dyed yarn for socks. They feel really good knitting with them because they're usually much smoother and silky. But they do, for the most part, I would say they wear out before the socks I make with like this kind of Oregia or Peyton's Croy. Like those kind of commercial sock yarns are a bit more toothy and they seem to wear better. But anyway, I did not feel like doing another vanilla sock, even though I could have because this is self-striping. And I typically do self-striping yarn. I knit them into um, just vanilla socks. And let the yarn do its thing but I didn't want to do a pattern sock so I remembered that I had saved that pattern of K's um, a long time ago so I got on there and I got that pattern I'm gonna go ahead and and cast that on because it's if well I'll just put a picture of it <laughs> so nice that I can insert pictures and you guys can see what I'm talking about so it's just like that little bit in the front that goes down the front of the sock that just kind of like chevron and then the rest of the sock is just plain, just your plain uh, stripes. So yeah, that's what I'm planning on doing with this. Gonna, I'm planning on casting that on today. All right, and then that is all that I actually have on my needles, but I did wanna talk about three, two or three uh, future knits because I'm always thinking about what am I gonna knit next? I recently found a podcast, and I'm going to pronounce this wrong, but I think maybe it's pronounced Anna Juti. <laughs> I should have watched. I should have watched how she pronounced it. Anina Juti. Maybe I should write it on here. I'm going to have everything down below, okay? She is, I can't remember if she is from the Netherlands. She's from that area, like geographically, she's from, I'm pretty sure she's from somewhere in that area. And she is a designer and I really like her designs because I feel like they are very classic and timeless. So several episodes ago, she was talking about, and she may have even been, I think she showed it, um, a pattern she was going to be releasing. And I was like, oh, I love that. I'm definitely buying that when that comes out. It is called the Tankar, Tankar Key Tea. I'm probably not pronouncing that correctly either. I love how all of us American speaking <laughs> podcasters are always, I feel like we're always continuously, actually maybe even English, just English in general, English speaking podcasters are constantly apologizing for our most likely mispronunciation of um, patterns and designer names, but I'm, I am, I don't, I don't know if I'm pronouncing this correctly, but um, here's a picture of it. What do I love about this? Why do I want to knit this? Because I love the shape. I love that it's a boxy tee. 
I really like that it has some interest. It's like a garter, a garter ridge. So it has ribbing and it has a garter ridge. But I love the shape of it. And I think that it would be a very timeless piece for my wardrobe, something that I would wear a lot. And that would be very flexible with the different bottoms that I have. I could wear it over dresses. I could wear it with jeans. I could wear it with like um, more casual looking pants. I just feel like it would be a really um, useful piece to have in my wardrobe. Again, I've said this before. I love to knit with color and I love to knit color work, but I find that the knitwear pieces that I wear most are just like the simple ones, like, like this. <laughs> These are the pieces I wear the most because they're most versatile and most flexible with what I have. Okay, so this shirt is knit in a DK weight yarn and um, she suggests either Sandiscarn Lene, maybe Line, maybe, again, probably mispronouncing, or Drop Spell, Garn Studio Drop Spell, which this is Drop Spell. I've knit many other things in Drop Spell. I've talked about my love of Drop Spell and how affordable it is. And um, so I would probably just go ahead and knit this in the Drop Spell because I'm, I already know my gauge with it and I'm familiar with that yarn. I know I like, see, I like the drape of it. I like how it feels on me. It's not the least bit scratchy. I feel very comfortable in this. Um, so I will most likely knit that in the Drop Spell when I cast this on. It is knitted top down, and I did read in the in the um, description of the pattern that you knit back and forth for the front and then the back, and then at some point you join them under the arms, and then you knit the rest in the round. So it's not like a raglan increase or a yoke, a circular yoke with increases like this one is. Um, but I've knit patterns like that. I would say my favorite are probably like the raglan or the yokes where I'm just where I cast on and I just boop you just go and you divide for the sleeves eventually. I prefer that rather than knitting back and forth in panels and then joining them but it's not that big of a deal really. So um, yeah so those are the details that I got from the video or from the um, pattern description but I just love that and I really enjoy her podcast as well. So I will link that down below for you guys to check out as well. And then I have, so, so I might, I might actually, I might actually knit that in this yarn, which is not drop spell. So I'm kind of like eating the words I just spoke, but I have this and I got this, I have four skeins of this. It is considered a, it's considered a worsted weight. It's, it's labeled as a, as a weight of four, but I don't see that at all. When I look at this, I definitely see a DK weight. In fact, I have some drop spell here. So let's compare. The drop spell actually looks a bit thicker, just a little bit thicker than this Barocco Indigo. Um, but I may, since I have this yarn and I'm really, you know, I, I really try to use what's in my stash rather than to buy new, I might go ahead and use this yarn. And I, this is a really nice color because it would be, um, it's very neutral and it would go with a lot that I have. So this might end up be what I, this might end up being what I cast on the Tankar tea with. I like that color and this is recycled denim and cotton that's what the indigo is so it's 95% cotton and then 5% other fibers which maybe that I don't know it's recycled it's recycled yarn which is pretty cool we'll see we'll see what happens I need to finish up some of these things I'm already working on before I cast on another shirt okay but I do have dropped some drop spell I ordered this uh, back Two months ago now when I ordered when I ordered the um, yarn for this so I, it's this petrol color I use this as my contrast color in my seaborn tea that I talked about in my last episode and it's very bright this 
I like this color. I just don't wear it very often. But what I was thinking, I have a lot of this. I don't, why did I order so much of this? I don't even know because look, this is all I used for my Seaborn tea. Just that little bit. <laughs> I have four, eight. I have, I ordered 12 skeins of this which this drop spell and i know i've said this before but in case you're new here i can i got this on wool warehouse i've ordered from them multiple times it's where i order most of my drops yarn so i have ordered quite a bit of um, drops air i like the drops air for bigger sweaters i've knit multiple sweaters out of that yarn and I, so i usually order off of them there's also laughing hens which they're another uk based online shop you can order this from um, and I think their shipping is just about the same and probably the shipping time is is probably very similar too but it's like three dollars for a ball or a little under it's so it's very affordable so 12 skeins is like $36 you can get two different sweaters out of that but I think what I'm gonna do I honestly, I don't know why. I think I was going to knit a two for, two for tank, which um, that's a cool one because it has like a, I can't remember if it's just like a scoop neck or a crew neck and then a V neck and it's reversible. I've had that saved in my Ravelry for a while and I think that was my intention to use some of this yarn with and then I never did cast that on. I still may. I don't know. Um, I also thought about if I didn't do that one, just doing the tip top tank, which I've made before and ripped out because I made it in a size too big. So now I know to go down a size. Um, but I was thinking, you know, what might be nice is to make a ranunculus in this. So it'd be like a summer ranunculus because this is cotton. This is cotton, viscose, and linen. So I have multiple ranunculus, ranunculi. Um, but they're all for like warm weather. They're not ones that I would wear on a cool summer night, unless it was a cold summer night, which let's hope we don't have any of those. <laughs> but um, I, so I thought about doing an ranunculus with this or even doing a Felix pullover. And the gauge would be different because the Felix pullover, I've knit two and both of them have been in very, a heavy, heavy worsted yarn. And um, so I would just have to, I know what my gauge is in this, so all I would need to do is use that little formula to figure out what size of the Felix to cast on to get what I want. So I may even just do that. I haven't decided. So it's, I think I'm gonna do either the Ranunculus or the Felix pullover. Honestly, I probably have enough to do both, but I don't wanna have two big sweaters in this color. Um, so I'm just gonna, and also realistically, I don't, what, I don't have time to do all of that right now for the summer, you know, so I just want to focus on one. So I'm going to pick one and use this to make that. I talked about a lot of things. I've mentioned a lot of um, patterns and some podcasts. I hope I remember to link everything down below. I don't have all of those things that I mentioned written down in my notes. So if you're curious about something and I did not link it down below please let me know and I will try to get that information to you um, I'm having a hard time I've been having a hard time responding to the all the comments and I also I wanted to say I also got a couple of emails from from a couple of viewers I'm gonna get I'm gonna respond to you I just I have not I've been dealing with this Lyme situation now for two weeks, two and a half weeks. So I just haven't felt myself and I have not had much energy. Um, so I just, I I have people that have texted me that I need to get back to. <laughs> I feel like a really horrible communicator at the present time, but I'm gonna get to that. Um, thank you for reaching out and thank you for leaving, leaving comments. I put all of my contact information down below. I have my Instagram account listed down below, which I'm not super active on that account at the present time. I am very random with my posts on there right now. Um, and I have my Ko-Fi account down below, and then I also have my email down below if you want to reach out to me through my email. Do I have anything else to talk about? I think
think that's all. I'm up to 55 minutes. So that's good. Uh, that's, I feel like that's decent. I have noticed lately that my videos are taking hours to upload onto YouTube and I don't know if it's speak and I think that started to happen when I got this new phone. So I'm thinking that it's recording or saving my videos in a higher resolution, which isn't a bad thing for when you guys are watching them because then they're going to look clearer. But I think that might be why it's taking hours and hours to upload my videos. It's, it's used to take like under an hour, I could get a video uploaded and now it's literally taking like four hours to upload a video, which is really, it tries my patience, <laughs> but it's not really that big of a deal, is it? So, um, thank you guys for watching. I hope that I didn't overwhelm you with all of my chatter because I felt like I did have a lot to say and I appreciate you watching. It was, feels good to have come back and to film an episode. It's always slightly overwhelming to film an episode when you feel like you haven't filmed for a while and it probably hasn't even, it's probably only been what, two or three weeks? I would love, I would love, okay, wait, one more thing before I go. Sarah, of it, it is a Sarah podcast. I love her podcast. I think I'm almost positive I've mentioned it on here before. Um, I love watching her. She films every Monday and every Friday. Go check her out. Not only does she film in English, she films in her native language, which she speaks Dutch. She's from the Netherlands. And I am like so impressed with her ability to film. And she is such a joy to watch. She is such a joy. She's like, if I'm last, so last week I was really feeling down because I wasn't feeling well physically. I, her podcast episodes were like a balm to my soul. <laughs> she was just, she's just so fun to listen to. And I think she's so adorable and she just seems to be like, you know, not, no one is always happy, but she just seems to be a very happy, laid back person. And perhaps I am misperceiving or I'm wrongly perceiving that. I don't know, but I, what, whatever, I really enjoy watching her podcast. And if you don't know about her podcast yet, you should definitely go check her out because she's very enjoyable to listen to. And then, um, Sherry of Ali and Bella just put an episode on and I don't think she's put in, she, I don't think she's posted an episode for like two plus months. And she's another one I, I really love to watch. So I've gotten about halfway through her episode. I started it this morning and then I needed to get on with my daily tasks. So I didn't finish it because I think hers was maybe around an hour long, which honestly, I hardly ever watch a podcast from start to finish. It's usually broken up over a couple of days just because that's how it works out with, um, you know, my day and all my tasks and stuff. But um, those are a few of the recommendations. Again, I feel like I recommended and talked about so many different things in this episode. So just, if I forget to tag something down below, just, you know, say it in the comments and I will, I will, um, I will re-edit my video description and make sure that that gets included. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that you're having a um, fun time with whatever knitting projects that you're getting into. And uh, let, if you want to, let me know what, what knitting project is currently bringing you joy. What are you enjoying working on? And um, yeah, I'm going to just keep forging away here on my Pine Creek crop. Hopefully next time I podcast, I will be through the lace section and I can show you guys some progress on that. And um, yeah, I think that's all. So until next time. Have a wonderful day. Enjoy your knitting. Enjoy whatever season you're experiencing. I think most of you are probably in summer, but I know that I do have some Southern Hemisphere viewers. So is your, I guess you're going into your winter season there. Um, but anyway, just I wish many blessings to you all and I will see you next time.